Hello, I'm Professor Santiago, and what I'll be talking about today is that we'll be introducing the concept of Z-transforms. When we talk about Z-transforms, we are really using it to analyze linear discrete time systems, as well as bringing in polynomial and rational functions. And we'll see that the discrete time convolution or the finite impulse response or FIR convolution is equivalent to doing polynomial multiplication. In addition, the roots of these polynomials is very important because they govern the properties of digital filters. And that's in terms of location of these roots of these polynomials. The Z-transform method is introduced in these series of videos for FIR filters or finite impulse response filters as well as finite length sequences in general. Will we use these FIR filters to introduce the important concepts of representing these signals in the time and frequency domain? We're also going to take a look at representations of signals and systems and we're going to take a basically look at three representations. The first one is the time domain or end domain and this will involve difference equations and impulse responses. The second one is the frequency domain or omega domain. This will involve frequency responses as well as spectrum representations. And then the third one and most important when we talk about digital signals and systems involves the Z domain and that involves having knowledge of Z transforms, its operators, as well as poles and zeros. You may ask, what's the value of having three different representations? Well the answer is that for difficult analysis one domain may be easier to do than the other domains. Therefore Increased understanding will result from developing skills from moving from one representation to another. Say for example the cascade combination of linear time invariant systems which in the end domain seems to require new, which is less familiar, technique of convolution is converted to the Z domain into the more familiar algebra. So let's begin with the definition of the Z-transform. Say we're given a finite length signal Xn. So we have a finite length signal of Xn. and we can represent this signal by the following relationship. We take this Xn and we say it's composed of a whole bunch of weighted time shifted delayed impulse functions. So here's our impulse functions that's delayed and weighted by this value x sub k and we're going to sum it from k equals 0 to infinity. Now the z-transform of this signal, of such a signal, is defined as follows. Is defined by this formula. Alright, x sub z now, we're transforming this time domain into the z domain such that x sub z is equal to the summation of x sub k times z minus k. Also going from k equal to 0 to n. So this xn is just substituted into here where it's being summed from k equals 0 to n and we multiply this by z minus k. Now the z you can think of this as a delay operator in which we'll discuss in later videos. 
Now here we assume that Z represents a complex number. That is, Z is the independent complex variable of the Z transform X sub Z. Now this is the conventional definition of the Z transforms. However, it might be instructive to note that X sub Z can be written in the form as follows. X sub Z is the sum equal to the summation of K equal to 0 to n where x sub k is multiplied by z minus 1 raised to the kth power. And what this emphasizes is that the fact that x sub z is simply a polynomial of the variable z minus 1. So let's do an example of a z transform of a sink here we're given this discrete time sequence where n is started here at equal 0 and ends at n equal 5. So we have a sequence going from 2, 4, 6, 4, 2, and 0. And we want to take the z transform of this. We simply take the coefficients, if we look at the formula, it's just summation from k equals 0 to n, since there's a finite length sequence, x sub k, z minus 1 raised to the kth power. So what we do is just take each one here, x sub z, transform that into a Z transform as a polynomial so that we have the first one is 2 but that's raised to the 0 power the second one is 4 raised to the minus 1 power plus 6 raised to the second power plus 4 raised to the third power plus 2 raised to the fourth power and 0 raised to the minus fifth power. Or we can simplify this as 2 plus 4z minus 1 plus 6z minus 2 plus 4z minus 3 plus 2z minus 4. So this example shows how to find the Z transform given a sequence. So here's our sequence and here's our Z transform of that sequence which is just simply a polynomial. In the next video we'll discuss and provide an example of the inverse Z transform. You can also visit my website here or my blog where I'll discuss this video as well as other videos on this topic of Z transforms as well as digital signal processing and signals and systems.